first and foremost, art is uh, a form of communication. Uh, if it's visual, then it's in visual terms. If it's, you know, um, I guess I view art as a really broad spe spectrum of creativity where um, the main objective is to communicate ideas, emotions, experiences, uh, or paths in life to other people. So first and foremost, it's a communication. By, by its nature, it's, it's, it's personal expression, whether it be about ourselves, which it really is always about, or whether it's about the community or the world uh, or the larger issues. It still comes, in, comes around to, it's a personal expression of our own, about what we think and we fear. Art is basically the ability to absorb your environment and take I guess the the most out of the des desired aesthetic of that environment and project it onto whatever, you know, canvas, what have you. I started as an artist, I, I started around age four after drawing on the walls with crayon, uh, Crayola crayons. I started doing uh, drawings with all the leftover paper from my dad's office where he worked as a clerk having two jobs when I was an infant. And about that age I decided I was going to be the greatest artist in the world. But since then, I've decided I could just be the greatest artist I can be. Well, I've always wanted to find something like a, like a calling. And I was that kid who changed her mind every five minutes. And one day, my mom was like, by the way, you have an interview for an art school. I said, well, Mom, I don't, I don't know. I can't do anything like that. I guess you can, you know you can, make a portfolio with your pictures and so I came to school here was, uh, last year and I, I can't believe that I'm to the place I am right now and it's really all thanks to my mom because she was always like you're never going to amount to anything if you don't pick something and stick to it so she put me someplace that I'd have to stick to it and I'm glad she did because it's what I want to do. I, have, I mean, I was always building things, you know, I was always, we lived, I grew up in Miami, and um, we had sand, and we had neat things to build with palm fronds and all kinds of stuff, so I, I remember building things all the time. But my mother, when I was about five, asked me if I wanted to take piano lessons, so I go, why would I want to do that, you know, so I had no interest at all, and, you know, like for me, and so I said, I just told her, I said, I want to take art lessons, and so she made arrangements for me to take art lessons with a, uh, an artist, in, we lived in Coconut Grove, an artist in Coconut Grove, and I went to her back porch and, once a week and they, you know, started learning how to, how to paint and how to make art. And it was a really, you know, it was wonderful. So I was able to combine again at that time, making three-dimensional things and, and painting. So. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I went to, to Catholic school and the nuns would let me get out of kind of class things if I, if I did uh, religious drawings on blackboard. <laughs> It's a hard question because it's something that I've done ever since I was really young. And I think it was, uh, I gravitated to, I was the kid in class drawing, you know, when, or, and that, that was like when I was, in, you know, first grade in kindergarten. Um, it was just always something that was, uh, there's a little bit of magic involved in it. Uh, and I wasn't really socially adept as a kid. And so being able to draw people towards me with another way of communicating 
was a lot more natural at the time. And then it's just grown from that point. I have, an, I have an unyielding drive to do so, um, to not make, to not produce or create. Um, I don't think I have that, that luxury. I wish in some sense it'd be nice to say, oh, I don't have to, I don't have to make anything. Life would be so much easier. Um, but I, I have to in order to, I think, maintain some semblance of uh, sanity. So I'm just driven to do it. I think that everything that you do is an opportunity to create, whether it's getting dressed in the morning or having a conversation with somebody, and to be able to make it permanent in a painting or um, live theater, I think that you get to share with a larger audience. You get to express yourself to a, lot, a much bigger group rather than just sitting and having a conversation with somebody. I want to reach the masses in a way. I create to express myself in other ways that most people wouldn't think would work. Um, people who are mad a lot take wrestling classes. When I'm mad, I paint with bright red and black colors or I go take pictures of dark alleyways. <laughs> the, express my emotion and it's like having a journal but visually <laughs> because i'm bored can you elaborate a little bit for i'm very bored with the normalness of everything i have a job i have a house i have a car um i don't really need anything else so i pretty much just have to entertain myself and creating things is particularly entertaining A lot of people in my family are very artistic and as a young age I was, um, my dad would give me art lessons and whatnot and I guess he's a lot of my inspiration. My sister, I paint her like all the time because, I don't know, just when I see her I just think, oh, I need to paint her or something. It's, I see a lot of things and I'm just like, I want to draw that and it looks cool and so, yeah. It's this thing that's inside. Um, a passion that I've had ever since I think I was six years old and I remember the first improv that I ever did. Um, it's constantly trying to get that feeling back and, and it's never the same. Anything I create I feel like I'm constantly pushing boundaries and discovering new things about myself as an artist. My response to the built environment I think um, I get very excited and very depressed too about the uh, world in which we live. Um, but when I say I get excited, I'll see a dumpster or I'll see power lines or I'll see um, these things that shouldn't be pretty, and they're not pretty. Um, but in order for me to, I think, um, understand why our constructed landscape looks the way it does, um, I have to paint it or I have to render it. And it's a way of me processing it's a way of me understanding our current sense of place in the world. Uh, so I draw my source of, of interest from a lot of different um, areas, but one of them is the, the built environment, the environment in which we live. Everything inspires me. My sister, my dad, my mom, and like I said, my emotions mainly, because that's what makes me want to go out and do something is being sad or angry and not 
knowing what else to do. So you could just, instead of sitting in your room and putting your headphones in, you could go out and paint something pretty or take a picture. Well, sometimes it's the desire to make something different than the things I see all around me because I get tired of seeing the same things over and over again that are rehashed and re-put back together and then resold to everyone. And so I try and make things that are genuinely different than those things. Or you can be inspired by seeing someone do something amazing and it changes the way that you think about what you are capable of doing. Well, my mom's an artist. Uh, I feel like she's influenced me a lot. Um, I also really like children's theater, and I think that I, being able to, I did a lot of theater as a child, and um, I also think I studied acting, and actors are so, there's so much ego involved, and when you really look at children's theater, nobody cares. Everything's really just about the piece, about the art, instead of I want to become famous or I, I'd like to, I want to do this. And when you look at them. And also, nobody's aware of themselves yet. I feel like kids, they will, will get up on stage and they, they're not scared. You really have to be fearless in this work. Um, and I feel like with Children's Theater, I see that. I see this fearless work. I also love the fact that in my past, I've always been pushed to. Um, go after my dream to to be an artist. I feel lucky because I think a lot of people um, it's not the case. I don't think that everybody gets that support that I've been given and so as an artist I feel that it's necessary for me to support um, I don't have kids right now but support people who who want that path and to, to make it possible because it is completely yeah, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, I can almost tell when I'm not in a great place because my heart is a little bit darker, it's a little, and it's, it's interesting because I can do something I think is playful, but if I'm, if I'm having a, a, a personal issue or a struggle, then I find that slowly the art becomes darker and darker somehow, and it, it's, um, it is impacted. And, I'm, and maybe I'll think, well, that was kind of a nice light, colorful piece and three days later I come back and I see it and I realize well no this was uh, this was something that was being really influenced by my emotion at the time. Mm -hmm. Well I lived under guidelines for pretty much forever so when I create things I try and make them outside of regular guidelines so that it's sort of freeing from the everyday stuff that I've been doing for my entire life. I wouldn't call them sacrifices. It's, it's difficult to pursue something that's not a clear path. I have a lot of friends who became doctors and lawyers and everything seemed very clear for them. Um, so I think that's a sacrifice to have to make that you're in a boat and it feels sometimes rocky at times, especially when you freelance and your project, you do a project, but then it ends. But the freedom that surrounds that and the new people that I get to meet um, I think that you're creating in a world with endless possibilities. I feel lucky. Uh, I've gotten spoiled in life. Uh, I, I um, have been an artist for too long. And what that means is like I wouldn't be able to really, I, I would have a hard time knowing what to do with myself if I didn't do what I do. And so I do what I have to do to continue to do what I want to do. And if that means that you know, if, if money's tight, then I do what I need to do to be able to continue to make art. 
you know, and that means, you know, I've worked a construction job over, you know, a year to be able to uh, avoid a day job. Oh, well, one of the things is that you don't expect to get rich. You know, if you're looking for a lot of security in your life, don't become an artist. So that's a sacrifice, I mean, you know, but still have been able to have kids, have a great life, travel, do all the things that we want to do. So I, I don't think the sacrifices have been great at all. I think it's been really pretty easy to do. Yeah, and I think one of the things with both Jan's art and, and my art, neither one are, are, are wildly popular to the general general population so you, you, you do kind of get that question of that look of well, why would you ever want to be doing that? Who would buy that? <laughs> well I mean I wouldn't really call it a sacrifice and just time out of my life to make it and it's not it's not really a sacrifice to me I feel like it's making the best of myself creating. I have to put everything I can feel into a painting to get the right mood in a painting and it takes just a lot of consideration to get the painting to turn out well. Every single work of art is, is a separate universe by itself. Well, I guess the things that you create can teach you stuff about yourself that you didn't know before you spit it out into whatever form it was. So when you go back and look at it, you may be able to find out things about yourself that you may not have been telling yourself quite as clearly. Well, um, it's a work, it's a progress. Um, and especially in theater, I just took on a, a new role. Um, you work and you work and then it's over and you forget about it and you will go on to your next piece. And I like that. It reminds me almost of Eastern religions. It's that nothing's permanent. And we can't have, we can't latch on to these attachments in life because what's real and what's not real. Um, so I feel like theater teaches me that a lot with the fact that we can love something so dearly. And then we strike it and it's completely gone. Just like a sand mandala. Just like you make something completely perfect and then you erase it. There's something really spectacular about that. I don't know if we would destroy a Monet. I don't know if we would do that because we want it to last forever. Um, I like that. I like impermanence. I think being open to ideas, being open to experiences more than anything, the idea that uh, we're not living a dress rehearsal right now, that life happens right now, and that if you're paying attention to life like that, then you want to live for experiences instead of def destinations. And so it makes for a full life. Where my work comes from varies so much. I can start a piece where I'm just exploring material and then the ideas come as I explore that. Um, and other ideas are, are complete sketches that I know specifically what I'm trying to say and what things I'm trying to explore. So uh, some of that deals with um, my own personal experiences like I talked about and some of it's playing with ideas, playing with how you know, light works on a sculpture you know, or how um, 
uh, what something that you would think of as precious, like a piece of marble, looks like next to like jagged steel, and uh, and how that kind of how those materials talk back and forth. So like being specific with that, it's it's really really subjective. I just have these like open landscapes with like these dilapidated structures, um, and what's funny to me is people respond to it one of two ways. They'll say, "Oh, how beautiful and how comforting and how quiet." And other people will say, how sad and depressing. And so it's like, I'll have both responses. People will say, oh, you must be a really sad, lonely person. I'm like, no, I think these are beautiful forms. Or, how quiet, I love the solitude. So it's, which I like for the fact that the last thing I want someone to do is like, yeah, you know, and walk away. At least there is um, always some interaction with the work. So it's one of positive or negative, and I'm fine with either. Um, sometimes it's not so positive. Some people might be like, that is horrible. But I try not to let it get me down because it's different strokes for different folks, I guess. Um, but sometimes it's positive. People say, I really like how you can like, and like throw like hip hop with classical or put rock in with jazz. Or sometimes I'm um, trying to think of like the broadest thing I've ever done, like metal with rap. Like that, that was like, I was like Run DMC, like Jay-Z and Linkin Park. I was like, I want to do something like that. So I just wrote down some lyrics and kind of went with it. And I mean, I just try to really talk to people through my music. I try to leave it open for interpretation because I'm big on opinions. Everybody has their own opinion and they should be able to state that opinion. So I'm not going to make a piece, usually I won't make a piece that says this is exactly what you're supposed to be feeling, feel this way. I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. I mean, art is supposed to have some kind of interpretation and it does, like inside for me my art has my feelings or what I'm thinking in it, but I am the only one that would know that. I, um, you know, it's, I think it's like most artists, it's, it's interpreted and received differently depending on who's looking at it. I mean, there are people, I think, in, with all artists, you're going to have people who look at it and go, oh, I love this, it excites me, it's interesting, how'd you do this? Other people are going to look at it and go, why is he doing this? Why, why would he do it this way? I don't, I don't like this. This isn't something I would do. And so, you know, you're always going to have people falling on, on both sides of the fence because that's... Or in so many ways, a personal matter. You find people that know a lot about art will be a lot more receptive to what we both do. Um, people that don't know a lot about art, if they happen to be struck by the colors in the work or the shape or some technique we use, then you might reach them that way. But as far as the truly understanding what we do, there aren't that many people that understand it, that get it. I want people to be able to express themselves through art, so I try to uh, rub off on people and show them that there are better ways than um, you know, cutting yourself or you know, drinking away your problems or doing drugs and stuff like that to um, escape from life because and it, it's hard to see how painting or drawing could get your anger out or help with emotional things you're going through, but it's surprisingly helpful. And I want people to be able to see that because I've, I've been through a lot of things and um, like I was saying, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have my art. Probably miserable. <laughs> because I wouldn't know how to express myself. Well, I said it. I think that art makes the world go round. I think there's a reason why we walk into a museum and you like something, but I don't get it. But then I walk over the corner and I am so drawn to something, but I don't understand. It makes you understand yourself more. And how big everything is. 
makes us realize how big everything is. Yeah, I, I, art is not something you do because someone else suggests that you do it. It's not something that you do um, unless you really feel inside driven. It, it is, it's almost like an addiction. It's a drive. You've got to do it. And that's the, the, that true motivation coming through because it, is, it is, has its struggles. It's not an easy path. Um, the rewards are phenomenal, but they are not monetary, and they come, they're, they're, they kind of come in bits, you know, like a little bit here, a little bit there, sometimes with a lot of low periods because, you know, people aren't understanding what I'm doing, or I don't understand what I'm doing, or whatever, but you do it because you have to do it, and it just feels like the right thing to do. It is the oldest form of communication, and yet, for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's often the least understood or overlooked, I think, and is seen as an addition to culture, which, in fact, I would argue that it's the science and that it's the art of a culture that propels it forward. Um, so I just find it fascinating. As, as, an, as a working artist, I, I, I see other people that are also in the sciences and in the arts, which I think are constantly under attack, um, I just find it really interesting that for whatever reason, and I hope this film and I hope this type of, of education um, fosters a, um, an understanding that art is a necessity for a healthy civilization, a healthy culture.